Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be going over a couple of videos here. The first video that I'm going to do today is about nuclear plants with this whole conflict between Ukraine and Russia. I'm a little concerned about it. Bloomberg did an interview that was published five hours ago, Bloomberg uh, TV, uh, talking to the IAEA. Um, it's... I think it's done really well. I think it gives a good overview of what's going on. So let's go over that and understand the other risk point globally when we zoom out, when we look at Europe, the Middle East, the conflict potential ality in, in Asia, uh, also, you know, all the, the crazy stuff going on with MPOX, we got to just kind of zoom out and like look at all these, these different stress points in society. Um, what's going on with the election in the United States, this is just another data point of some of the instability and unrest and chaotic behavior that may emerge and move in a different direction. All right. So uh, this is, you know, a phase transition maybe in society. Maybe this is a chaotic attraction. There's lots of ways to describe this, but there's, there's a chaos that's building up, all right? It doesn't mean that we're gonna have a nuclear accident with these plants, but risks are, the risk factors are elevated. In addition, the risk factors are elevating with tactical nukes, the use of tactical nukes. And if Russia keeps on being pushed back to a certain point, will Russia start using its nuclear arsenal to some degree, either tactical or strategic nukes? So we, we, uh, the point here is, is that the risk factors are elevated and they're elevating. So we need to really pay attention to this. So before I start, please make sure you subscribe to all my channels. I have four channels on YouTube. I have Bright Team, Bit Shoot, and Rumble. All the links are in the description of this video. I also have X and Getter, so please follow me there. I've noticed that some people don't get a notification when I do a premiere until about a day later or a few hours later. So it's really important that you follow me on X and Getter so you get the notifications. In addition, please help to support my work. I have thousands of videos that are for free to help to improve your health, learn about current events, give you my perspective on it. So I need your help by donating. You can donate on my website, the-studio-reykjavik.com. On the homepage at the very bottom, you can donate through Stripe, PayPal, or buy me a coffee. You can also be a paid member to my Patreon channel that helps support my work. The higher tier leveled members on Patreon get some access, some free access to my medical lectures. So please subscribe to Patreon. And if you're a higher tiered member, you're gonna get some benefits and see my lectures on pulmonology and immunology. In addition, Please go to my store, the-studio-rakevit.com and get the health supplements that I have and follow my protocols. Let's talk about what is happening in Kursk right now. You have, we understand, accepted an invitation from the Russian authorities. Invitation from the Russian authorities. When are you planning to visit the site? When are you planning to visit the site? Well, good morning. First, uh, yes, indeed, as you were saying in the introduction, we have a very concerning situation uh, there on top of what we have been working on and, and what we have been seeing in Saporizia. Now we have a second nuclear power plant, which is, if not on the front line, like Saporizia, very close 
to another point of contact or front line in uh, the region of uh, Kursk, um, as you rightly said. Um, uh, since this um, uh, advance of uh, Ukrainian troops uh, started and uh, in the proximity of a nuclear power plant, um, the Russian authorities have been giving us some information. And my reaction to that was, as always, that we, uh, the only way in which the IEA can validate things, confirm things, is when we have an opportunity to independently assess what is happening. This is valid for Saporizhia, this is valid for uh, nuclear proliferation in Iran, or wherever the IEA is. Uh, hence, this uh, dialogue uh, led to, um, to an invitation to come, and we are working on the details. As, uh, as you can imagine, uh, visiting a combat zone is not like, uh, you know, a normal business trip. So we are working on a number of logistical and security details that are necessary in order to make this possible within the next few days. What do, you, what do you expect to accomplish on this trip? What do you expect to find on this trip? Can you give me a sense of what this plant looks like, how it's laid out, how protected it is? I understand yeah, that there's a concrete dome it, it, over the it, reactor, etc. This is a very um, uh, peculiar uh, facility. You have there six uh, nuclear uh, reactors. You have two which are being decommissioned, so they are not working and they are being dismantled, if I can put it like that. There are two which are operating. First, important key information. This is not like I, 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 I want to I wanna break this down a little bit. Okay, so in the occupied zone, for lack of a better term, by the Russians, we have a nuclear power plant. So it's on the, um, for Ukraine, it's like the southern southern area, south southeastern area. It's more southern than eastern. Zep Zepo Riz Zaya nuclear power plant. Of course, I'm sure I'm butchering the, the pronunciation. Then there's this Kursk power plant. Now this is in Russia proper with the Ukraine forces moving into in, into the Kursk region. I'm not saying this is going to happen. All right, but let's just let's just do a simulation, a mental simulation. If the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian forces do something on accident or on purpose that leads to a nuclear fallout, some sort of nuclear release of, of radiation. It will push Russia to go to the international community to stop and that this would be a war crime and that if the international community doesn't help with stopping the leak and stopping the incursion, because you're not talking about a power plant in Russia proper, not just in the, the disputed area of Ukraine and Russia. That may push the Russian people and, the, and Putin particularly in posturing himself and threatening NATO with tactical moves. Because you gotta remember the trade winds and the, the, the way the weather works here, all right? You know, we kept on thinking, of course, nuclear weapons are bad. I've been, when I was a kid, I was like, you know, after seeing the day after, which was in the eighties during the Reagan administration, um, you know, just kind of like fearful of nuclear war, right? But I'm against nuclear, even nuclear power, not just nuclear weapons, because it's not, it's not safe. If something does happen, it's catastrophic. It can't be fixed. If a black swan happens, it, it, there's radiation. You can't clean it up. Even if there is no explosion at a plant, or release of radiation into the water supply or you know, waterways or whatever, just decommissioning it 
it's a toxic waste dump. What do you do with the material that's going to be radioactive for thousands of years? In some cases, tens of thousands of years. So it's not safe because if a, if something does happen, it's catastrophic, catastrophic. And even if something doesn't happen, what do you do with the waste? Because these nuclear power plants create waste. We don't have a good means of converting radioactive material into useful products, right? This is why coal burning plants are way better for energy production than nuclear power, all right? Yes, you have a very high energy density in nuclear power. And yes, an accident is rare, but if the accidents happen or you're in a war and someone takes advantage of the plant, to be able to position themselves better on the battlefield or accidentally do something during in the war. It's catastrophic. We are it, we, here we have a potentiality of a Chernobyl kind of thing happen. Now, is it 90% chance of it happening? No, at least not yet, but it's probably a 20, 30% chance depending on what the hell is going on over there. So there's a lot of nuclear power plants in Ukraine, but there's a lot of nuclear power plants in Russia. So the probability of something going wrong on accident or on purpose is starting to elevate, all right? Um, so, you know, just keep in mind, now we're talking about not just plants and nuclear plants in Ukraine, or in the disputed area of Ukraine, but also in Russia proper. This is going to be a problem for the international community. Now, in, in, we've been told during the Cold War that, well, you know, nuclear, you know, nuclear conflict with NATO and Russia would be devastating for Russia and devastating for NATO. Yeah, all right. And that if you have enough missiles on both sides, both sides destroy each other, all right? That's possible. But if you just do one or two, the actual nuclear fallout because of the trade winds, depending on the weather, because it's variable, but on average, the wind is going from west to east. Sometimes it, it circles down into, into the Middle East because of some sort of uh, weather front from from the Arctic, but typically it's going west to east. We've been told in the Western society that, oh, we gotta worry about all the, you know, all the, the, the fallout and all that. If Russia nukes, if Russia does a tactical nuke on Ukraine, there will be fallout, right? There'll be radiation in that local area, but as it's going into the atmosphere, the wind is going to blow it into Russia. This is the reason that new that long term nuclear fall, fallout is actually worse for Russia and benefits the allied forces in NATO. Let me rephrase that so you understand that we've been sold a bill of goods during the Cold War where we have the upper hand, not Russia, but yet we've been demonizing Russia. If Russia uses tactical nukes in NATO or in Ukraine, the trade winds, the, the normal weather on average will blow over Russia, all right? So they're gonna get nuclear fallout and cause problems with their agriculture. Of course, there's gonna be radiation in the local area of the tactical nuke and in the surrounding area. So you have the, you know, there's gonna be rings and that radiation is gonna dissipate. But as that radiation goes up into the atmosphere, it's gonna blow over, all right? And move wherever the vectors are for that weather pattern. A lot of it goes over Russia. Now play it the other way around. If NATO or Ukrainians, Ukrainians don't really have nukes, but, but, the, but they do have dirty bombs. <laughs> But, but the thing is, is that if NATO 
or some one in Ukraine uses nuclear weapons and fires it into Russia, there's going to be local radiation at the at the target, but there's going to be a fallout that continues eastward. So the fallout is less. So this is one of the advantages that NATO's, NATO has. But they don't tell the Ameri they don't tell the average public this. So as the trade wind moves, it's now causing damage to the land in Russia, causing damage to the land in India, causing damage to the land in China, and goes into Alaska and causes damage in the tundra for, for Canada. Now, depending on if there's a northern front in the weather, then you may have dissipated radiation in the northern states in the United States. So it's not just tactical. The point here is, is it's not just tactical nukes in a local region where there's conflict. It's also the wind patterns on how the fallout happens and what the yields they are using for the tactical nukes. The lower the yield, the less of a spread for radiation that this is going to happen. The higher the yield, the more. All right. That's just at the at, that's just at the tactical nuke level. If one of these power plants blow up, and they're and it's one of these power plants that are hot and not in cold shutdown, we're talking about a serious problem. So the data point that we need to look at is what happened with Chernobyl back in the eighties, and regions not just in the Ukrainian region. But there were there were Russians and other other countries that had a nuclear fallout because of the trade wind, because of the this the the wind coming over. So this is a this is an important feature that people need to pay attention to. It's a function of the yield or the amount of radiation that it's released. High up, how high up in the atmosphere does it get, and what's the trade winds at that moment in time? at detonation and several days after. But the point here is the trade winds go west to east. That means that Russia gets most of the fallout. With that tidbit of information, please go to my store, the-studio-rated.com and help support PNN instead of CNN or Alex Jones, help support PNN and Dr. Paul Cottrell. So what you need to do is go to the store, the-studio-rakevic.com and get the structural nano silver, max 35, max 14, or the structural silver solution that is a 30 ppm. What you do is you take a teaspoon of this a day, swish it in your mouth, gargle, swallow. All right, it's really simple. It's neutralizing pathogens. It's improving your oral hygiene, reducing uh, gum irritation, and maintaining a mucosal barrier so you are boosting up your immune system. Really simple. Do it every day. If you're not feeling well because of the cold season, take a teaspoon or two a day. You know, if, if you're not feeling well, take a, a, a not a teaspoon, a, a tablespoon a day. Um, so, you know, in the morning, take the tablespoon, gargle, you know, uh, gargle with it and then swallow it. And then maybe at night, do the same thing with a tablespoon gargle with it and swallow at night if you're not feeling well during the cold season. If you are just everyday usage, just a teaspoon. So if you're not feeling well, tablespoon or two. If you are fine, take a teaspoon a day. This way you're maintaining your mucosal barrier, you're neutralizing pathogens, and you're improving your oral hygiene. It's really important. It's a major pillar for boosting up your immune system and slowing down the aging process. How does that, Dr. Paul Cottrell, how does that slow down your, 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 your aging process and improve longevity? If you're not chronically sick, then your immune system doesn't have to fight and therefore it can rest. 
and gain uh, more energy. It's really simple, all right? People that are chronically sick, they age faster. That's, an, that's a very simple observation, all right? When you get sick, just with the common cold, it takes you weeks to recover. Just because you feel better doesn't mean that your tissue is fully recovered. And it takes weeks to recover. The more severe the infection during the cold season, the longer it will take to recover. As you get older, it's harder to recover. So it adds to the stress of the cells and the aging and yada yada. So it's so important to boost up your immune system. It's very simple. It's a simple observation. People that are sick two or three times a year are literally a quarter of the year are healing their body. Very simple concept. So please go to my store and get the structural nano silver max 35 max 14 or the structural nano silver solution by um, the Amiopop product. I have applicator set. So go to, go to my store and get the applicator set. You get a spritzer, you get a dropper, and you get a nasal spray. It's great to put the liquid in this so you can spray surfaces, spray the back of your throat, use the nasal spray if you need it, and use the dropper to put it in your mouth. It's great to take it in a bag so you can take it to work instead of carrying a, a bottle. So take my advice or don't take my advice. It's up to you. But um, it works. And before we continue on with the video, um, please go to my store and get the ashwagandha root. This helps to control your blood glucose levels and it'll, it will reduce that inflammatory response in your vascular system because in the United States and probably even in Europe, there, there are uh, people that have too high of a glucose level, all right? Diabetes runs rampant. People's diets are high in, you know, um, um, carbohydrates and just the glucose just is through the roof, all right? You need to control that, all right? And if you have too much glucose in your vascular system, you're going to age faster. And it causes stress. So you want to control that with the ashwagandha. It's synergistic with turmeric. Turmeric will bring down inflammation. So by taking turmeric and ashwagandha together, what will happen is, is that you're gonna be bringing down that inflammation and you're gonna help your immune system and you're helping your vascular system. And you're controlling the high glucose levels. Another way to control the, the glucose levels is watch what you eat. Be cognizant of the sugar content that you're eating. Reduce, if not eliminate the sugar content. All right. The less sugar, the, the better. All right. That doesn't mean that you go into no carb diet, but stay away from sugary foods. That's a no, no. All right. One it's terrible for your teeth and two, it's really bad for your cardiovascular system. And you have tissues over time that won't respond to il insulin. So you end up getting type two diabetes if you have a high sugar, sugar content all the time. So it's really important to control that. Trust me. Some of the biggest diseases in the United States are preventable, are preventable. Diabetes, heart disease, those are two big ones that are, are, are preventable if you just change your lifestyle. So please go to my store and get the ashwagandha root, controls your blood glucose levels, brings down that inflammatory response, improves your vascular system. And when you're bringing down that, that um, inflammation in your body, your immune system is better because you don't want chronic inflammation. It, we, it, it speeds up your aging process and it weakens your immune system. Basically what we call uh, cold shutdown. So these are hot 
uh, nuclear uh, reactors, uh, which means that in case something, God forbid, happens, there will be a very serious situation. And then we have two others, two other uh, plants which are being constructed. So you have the whole, I would say, um, a spectrum of possibilities regarding a nuclear power plant. And the other important element that I want to signal is that these, the operating units are of a type called RB and K in the uh, Russian terminology, uh, which are similar to the nuclear power plants that you may remember from the from the Chernobyl, which means that they do not have a protecting dome um, around around them. Uh, so the just the normal roof, which means that the core, the reactor's core, is um, pretty exposed. And when you you know add up uh, the, the fact this fact to the to the issue that you have advancing troops uh, objectively speaking within artillery range, then this of course is a source of enormous concern uh, uh, to me and, and, and for the agency. So when you ask me what I want to accomplish, first of all is to check things on the ground to see what the situation uh, is. Um, we will be having, of course, conversations with not only the nuclear experts, I suppose there will be um, uh, security or military people who will be able to give me uh, their own assessment. We have to make our own assessment of the emergency preparedness and response preparations that this um, facility has. So it's an enormous task uh, ahead of us, not an easy one, but this is exactly what we need to do. Go where problem is. Well, Rafael, let's take that piece by piece and start with the safety concerns outside of the military risk itself. What does that so safety, that emergency preparedness you just referred to, actually look like? If we're talking about this kind of exposure, what kind of safety measures might we need to be put in, putting into place? Well, we need to, uh, of course, this is an evolving situation, right? Uh, so uh, we we do not have, and, and this is an active combat zone, let me remind uh, the audience again about this. So it's, an, it's a situation that is changing by the hour. Um, and, and this, of course, means, uh, what, I, what I mean by this is the distance or the capabilities that we are being deployed there which means that we need to know what are the what is the situation for example regarding the external power supply you know the external power supply is essential to ensure the cooling function of a i repeat operating nuclear power plant, which requires constant um, influx of uh, electricity in order to ensure the uh, cooling function, lest you have a meltdown of the reactors. We need to understand um, in the current circumstances what are, what is, how is the um, supply chain working. You know, a nuclear power plant, like any other big industrial site is, is in constant need of um, uh, equipment, uh, um, yeah. uh, things that come and go. And as you have seen, and I'm just simply mentioning, uh, you know, open source information that um, is available. There are some bridges that have been either blown up or or um, destroyed. So I need to understand exactly well how isolated or otherwise this nuclear power plant is um, at, at the moment. So the only way to do that is to go yeah. there to have a conversation with the local government and with the Russian federal government. So Rafael, you that... This is the story of how Pipe Drive can accelerate your business growth by automating ad so, Rafael, you, that, that's the safety concerns, of course, that, that you had mentioned. Let's kind of dive into that combat zone perspective that you were just talking about. There's been criticism that even though the IEA, uh, IAEA, excuse me, has been monitoring both Zafirishnia and Kursk for the past two years now, you haven't come out more clearly about who you think is behind the attacks on both nuclear plants, despite both Russia and Ukraine very clearly accusing the other sides. Any comments on that? Well, yes, we, we, we hear that. Uh, I think what is important uh, in this case is to understand what the role of the IEA uh, is and how the IEA operates. The IEA is not a commentator. 
is not a political actor, um, is not a, a country, is not a member of any alliance or, or otherwise. It's an international organization charged with the nuclear uh, non-proliferation, nuclear safety, nuclear security, nuclear energy, nuclear applications, and so on and so forth. So whenever we have a situation, whichever this may be, this is why I made the analogy of, I mean, this situation, or it could be a nuclear non-proliferation case in the Middle East, uh, the only way we can pronounce ourselves in a definitive and clear way is when we have elements in our hands. We are also a, a body of inspectors that um, undisputably indicate the origin of an event. If I don't have these elements, I can describe the, the issue. I can even go as far as saying how we think this occurred, but we cannot get into speculations of why, or the motivations, or the reasons, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Or this, you have the US Security Council, you have many other things. This being said, this being said, if we had uh, undisputable, irrefutable evidence pointing to an, a source for an event, we would say, what I have been saying, I've, and I've said it in front of the United Nations Security Council, is that whoever is behind this, this must stop. A nuclear, an operating nuclear power plant is not, cannot be, should never be a military target. So what we can do for the international community is being there, being a deterrent, and importantly, giving objective information. Otherwise, you are at the mercy of one or the other narrative. So, Rafael, just to be clear, are you saying you don't know where the attacks are coming from on both South Mauritania and on Kursk? Well, first of all, uh, we have to make a, a difference, an important difference here. In the case of uh, Saporizia, there have been a number of um, uh, episodes, attacks, and there have been mutual accusations. Hmm? Uh, the Russians accusing the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians accusing the Russians. We have been uh, um, uh, diving as deep as possible into the issues, the last of which was, as you may remember, um, uh, 10 days ago, uh, more or less, when the cooling tower of uh, the Saporizia, one of the cooling towers of the Saporizia nuclear power plant was on fire. Um, when that happened, we got access to, to the place just a few hours after the, the fire had been put down, and we were able to issue a number of technical updates, uh, which give a pretty um, good amount, I would say, of information about this. Um, so this is number one. Um, I have also explained that in the case of drones, given the trajectory of drones, given the erratic tra trajectory of drones, unless one can find um, yeah. enough um, evidence, uh, it would be even irresponsible to say it's, uh, it's A or B. So it's not that we are unaware. We have a number of elements, but again, before an international inspector yeah. says something definitive, one has to be absolutely 100% sure. And in the case of, um, of, of yeah. Kursk, then the situation is even less clear. Okay, on the situation in Kursk, have you received any assurances from Kyiv, from the Ukrainian side, that they will not be targeting the site there? We are working on that. Okay. What questions? Uh, so, so you have asked the questions. You know, here, here's, the so, problem. here's the problem with me, all right? They, all they care about is, you know, markets to go up and they, you know, and they want an immediate answer. But a lot of times, these types of events that have many different variables don't have a quick answer. So the mainstream media, they can't, this is the reason why they failed in covering the 2020 crisis. There are times where you can answer things quickly and there are times that need more in-depth analysis and discussion and explanation. And mainstream media does a terrible job because it's based on I mean, a, a, um, a model of very quick sound bites and segments that are maybe a three minute segment or a five minute segment. It's shocking that they gave 11 minute segment for this guy, all right? But it's normally, you know, very quick. 
And this is the reason why we are tiptoeing into a, a catastrophe in the world in terms of war, that's the Ukrainian war, the Israeli war, the war with China, the problems that, that are starting to build up economically because of over indebtedness. These are problems that really need a deep dive. All right. This is why pe people realize this. Pe people that are watching realize this. And that's why they're moving away from mainstream media and moving to alternative perspectives like this channel and many others, right? Because you can, you have, you, you, we can go into a deep dive. We can have this, we can have this discussion for two or three hours. There's no constraint, right? Other than your attention span and my energy level. But, you know, but the thing is, is that we, we don't have the same constraints as mainstream media. They're failing us. So that's why you need to support these types of channels and get different perspectives. You may not agree with me on everything. That's okay. That's okay. Even though I'm not wrong. But, you know, the thing is, is that there are lots of things have to be analyzed in a deep dive. So, and, you know, I'm, I, I'm shocked that Bloomberg spent the time with 11, but there's no quick answers to this. And if something does happen, you're talking, talking about market turmoil. You're talking about geopolitical problems. You're talking about potential nuclear fallout. <laughs> All right. Now, depending on where you are in the world, depends on how much you're going to have. Now, the far majority of the Americans probably won't have too much nuclear fallout. But Ukraine area is an agricultural area. So if there's a nuclear fallout, the granary in Ukraine probably is going to have a problem. And my understanding is about 30%, maybe more, of world grain production is coming from that region. Ah. So now eggs are more expensive, chicken's more expensive, and your radiated, your radiated grain is going to be more expensive. If I'm making you to the point where you can't sleep at night, please go to my store, the-studio-radiovic.com, and get the good night formula. I know that it's hard to sleep when you are listening to the news and you don't know if you're going to wake up glowing in the dark or, you know, the rest of the world is in a nuclear fallout. You just don't know. So please go to my store, the-studio-radiovic.com, and get the good night formula. It has tryptophan and melatonin in it. It'll allow you to get three cycles of REM sleep and deep sleep while the world is burning up. And what this will do is, is it will allow you to consolidate memory so you can remember the good old days. And it will help you to detoxify your body. A lot of people don't realize this, that, but deep sleep and REM sleep will help to detoxify your central nervous system and your other cells. Your cells go through a, a, a detoxification when you're in sleep, in a sleep mode. It'll also detox when you're in awake mode, but there's a, there's a very uh, robust detoxification of your body when you're in deep sleep, all right? If you're chronically deprived of sleep, you can't detoxify your body as well. And this is the reason why toxins start to build up. It's even harder when you get older because people that are older have sleep problems and endocrine disruption problems and all these other things. And so there's a buildup of toxins that lead to dementia and other types of diseases. So it's really important to have good sleep. Sleep is a major pillar for slowing down the aging process. Because you have more energy, you're consolidating your memory, you're going to have better uh, neural health, and you're detoxifying your body. So please go to my store, the-studio-rakepick.com, and get the good night formula as the world is burning up and going up in flames. Because it's hard to 
it's hard to concentrate when everything is happening. So if you have brain fog and you're having problems concentrating, take the clarity factor. Really important. It'll get rid of that brain fog. It'll allow you to concentrate at work or in school. If you're retired and you're not working and you're not in school, well, what you can do is still take this. This maintains those, those neural connections. How? By getting those neurons firing, keeping those dendritic connections active. And when you do all these other things that I tell you, like proper sleep and taking C60 and improving your mitochondrial health, you're going to actually have better neurogenesis. Taking CoQ10, all right? Taking all these things that I tell you, like ubiquinol and C60 and resveratrol, and you, you, they're synergistic for health, but not just overall health, but neural health. So please go to my store and get the clarity factor and stack it like I'm telling you. Vitamin C, really important while we go into the cold season. Trust me on this. Trust me on this. It'll boost up your immune system and improve your skin. Drink it with filtered water. If you don't drink filtered water, you're an idiot. Why? Because there's fluoride in unfiltered water and fluoride makes you stupid. So please go to my store, get the vitamin C, drink filtered water, boost up your immune system. If you're not feeling well during the cold season, take a double dose, really important. As you, can, as, you can, as, you, as you can imagine, guy, we're asking all sorts of questions. So I have to go, but, uh, and this is a very specific question. Okay, but the specific you question, should, uh, the specific question, so, sorry, Director General, the specific question is to the Ukrainian authorities, given the extreme situation and the lack of protection that the site in Kursk has, are you getting any assurances from the no, Ukrainian not. authorities who have obviously a lot of uh, invested interest here? Uh, after my not after, target this uh, site. Yeah. After my visit to to uh, Kursk and to Russia, the following week I will be in Kiev. I will be uh, hopefully talking to President Zelensky. See, the Bloomberg journalist just wants an answer because everything's so you know quick and easy, and everything is this is complex. The bottom line is, is that IAEA doesn't really have control of the situation. Will they ever have control of the situation? Most likely not. And we have a president that's not being a president right now. I don't know who's running the ship. You know, is it the Pentagon? Is it no one? What, what the hell's going on? All right. We may wake up in five days and have a nuclear detonation at a power plant. Forcefully or accidentally or whatever. That might happen. It's, you know, it's maybe a 20, 30% chance. But who's talking to who? Who's saying to Zelensky, you know what? We're a little concerned about this crap. Or is it that we want this to happen? Which is possible. That's why a deep dive has to happen. And there's no simple answers. I'm sorry, I just, I, I feel that the world is just spinning out of control. All right. Israeli Armed Forces. Right, this was about 50 minutes ago from this recording. I'm recording this on August 22nd. This is about 50 minutes ago. What was released by uh, Live Now from Fox dealing with the IDF in uh, Israel targeting different areas in Lebanon. So we'll play that. But before we do that, please go to my store, the-studio-rakevit.com, support my work, improve your health, get the multivitamin that I have on my store. It's easy to digest. It's, there are cofactors in here for enzymatic activity. With these cofactors, you're gonna have better cellular processes and, and tissue processes you should be taking a multivitamin every day, even when you have a balanced diet, just to make sure that you are 
maintaining that cellular health. It's really important. So go to my store and get the multivitamin. Vitamin B complex is very important to boost up your energy levels. Like I said, you know, for, for neural health, health, you need to boost up that mitochondria. The first five vitamins in this will help to boost it up. Vitamin one through five, vitamin B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, boost up mitochondrial health. It improves the electron transport chain that produces the ATP. You need ATP for your immune system, for cellular processes. It's the, the workhorse, it's the energy source of your body, the main energy source, it's not the only, but it's a, it's a major energy source. And when we get older, our ATP starts to go down, our cellular health starts to go down, our, our mitochondrial health goes down, our neural health goes down. So to maintain that, those neural connections, to maintain good cellular health in your other tissues, you need to be taking vitamin B complex. And it's synergistic with clarity factor. What did I say about clarity factor? It helps with neural health. It's synergistic with ubiquinol, which is an active form of CoQ10. If you pay attention to me and stack this, you are going to really skyrocket your health and really improve and get back to homeostasis. Because most likely, if you haven't been trying to improve your health, it's pretty poor because of diet and lack of exercise and all this stuff, right? The lifestyle in America sucks. And that's why the average IQ in America is 98, all right? That's part of it. It's the environment that we're exposed to, disrupting our endocrine system, causing lots of inflammation, and you know, not, not bettering yourself. Too much bread and circus. And with the bread, your glucose levels go up. That's why you need the ashwagandha to control those glucose levels. And the circus keeps you from actually reading a book. This is a targeted Hezbollah terror targets in about a dozen different areas of southern Lebanon, including weapon storage facilities, military structures, and a launcher used to carry out attacks on northern Israel. Israel adding that it did eliminate more than 50 terrorists over the past 24 hours in Rafah. In the meantime, do you want to take you to some video here? The USS Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier actually arriving along with other U.S. destroyers in the Middle East. Take a look at your screen here. In a statement, U.S. Central Command confirmed the arrival as the Lincoln is there to replace the USS Theodore Roosevelt U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordering the Lincoln to speed up to get to the region faster as threats of a major Iranian attack on Israel still loom. Do you want to talk more about all the latest developments? So let's bring in Josh Haston, a Middle East correspondent for the Jewish News Syndicate. As always, Josh, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Thanks so much, Josh. All right, so first off, I do want to talk about the Hezbollah targets over there in Lebanon. How significant is that? Because it appears that the situation is once again intensifying with the attacks by Hezbollah on Israel. Yeah, absolutely. From what I saw this morning, Israel attacked at least 10 different targets throughout Lebanon. We're talking about weapons storage facilities, trying to inca incapacitate Hezbollah's ability to fire rockets. That being said, uh, it is known that Hezbollah has over 100,000 rockets, and they have not been afraid to use many of those weapons over the last eight, nine months since October 7th attack. So the situation very tense on the northern border. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing Hezbollah firing more rockets at one time. In other words, where they used to fire maybe five, ten rockets. This past week, we've seen different uh, attacks, salvos of rockets coming in. We're talking about 40, 50 rockets at once. A lot of them are actually being uh, are actually hitting in the central and southern Golan. So they're moving a little bit further southern, um, a little bit further south there in Israel. So there definitely is major concern. You have to remember, 80,000 Israelis are not currently in their homes who live along the northern border. Situation is not sustainable. We'll have to see what happens in the days and weeks ahead. 
I want to pop up this video that I brought you a bit earlier here. This was actually released by CENTCOM in the U.S. And we know that the USS Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier and those other destroyers did arrive in the Middle East. So does it make the people of Israel feel any safer, better protected from an Iranian attack? So first things first, uh, you know, we definitely value the friendship that we have. The unbreakable bond, unbreakable bond between the United States and the state of Israel. And it is somewhat reassuring to see these different major military vessels heading over this way. That being said, I really hope that these vessels are here to help Israel uh, in targeting Iran, if that's necessary, if Iran launches a strike, or perhaps Israel will preempt a strike. I hope they're not here to send the wrong message to Israel, and that is, well, since we've done so much, I'm talking about the Biden administration, therefore Israel should not uh, either retaliate or take the initiative of launching a strike if that is necessary. We've been waiting now for several weeks. Uh, Iran continues. As of Sunday night, the Iranian foreign minister said that Iran would, in fact, respond militarily when the time when the time they saw fit was. So we're anticipating it could happen at any minute. I, I really hope that the Biden administration is fully on board on this, as they were in April. Let's give credit where credit is due in terms of shooting down over 300 rockets, missiles, and drones, which were launched at the State of Israel by Iran. So it has happened before. It can happen again. And let's hope that the administration is doing the right thing by bringing these uh, uh, ships to this region in order in order to help Israel defend itself if necessary. It's been now what's, several... now, what's very important, I've been doing these videos about, about Taiwan and China. Taiwan's naval fleet is growing. Our naval fleet is, we're trying to build ships, but we can't build them fast enough because one... We don't have enough shipyards. Two, there's not a desire by Congress to actually improve the fleet adequately. And we have these systems in, for these boats that are so technological and so expensive that I'm not sure if they're, they're as robust for a long naval battle with with. China. Now, there may be AI and drone technology underwater and above that may mitigate this power imbalance between the ship, the number of ships between China and, and the United States. That's left to be seen. There are some technologies that are being developed to perhaps be in the U.S. favor for the naval fleet. But, you know, if you just look at just ships, the number of ships, we are falling behind in naval projection of power in the Asian theater. The problem is, is that because of the things that are happening in the Middle East, the, the fleet, the carrier strike groups are spread thin. They have to move into place for a potential outbreak in the Middle East. Now, there is a benefit to that, and there's a drawback. One, you have less strike groups in the Asian theater, just in case that China decides to attack Taiwan. But by having car carrier strike groups in the Middle East, you can cut off the oil supply that Iran is providing China. So there, there is kind of, you know, on one hand, there, it's a benefit. On the other hand, it's not. The problem in here is, is that what's happening in the Middle East may affect what's happening in Asia. And I've been seeing this. I've been seeing this for a long time. Here. All right. So unfortunately, you know, and honestly, I think a lot of live now does a pretty good job of trying to cover what's going on in the world in general. Um, but again, there are these nodal points that are connected and there's contagions that might happen that lead to further global conflict. That's really important to pay attention to, all right? It's not just what's going on in the Middle East or what's going on in Asia or what's going on in Ukraine. They're all connected. They're all connected. It's an ecosystem that's all connected. 
please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the new product that I have, Ubiquinol. Ubiquinol is the active form of CoQ10. You need Ubiquinol. It improves your energy. It's an antioxidant and it helps to improve neural health. So please take Ubiquinol every day. I've been taking Ubiquinol every day for a long time, but now I've been able to be able to provide it on my store for you to add to the stack so you can follow what I'm doing, all right? Alex Jones doesn't tell you how to stack this stuff. Alex Jones doesn't have the high quality products that I have. Alex Jones doesn't understand how this stuff works. Dr. Paul Cottrell does. Help support Dr. Paul Cottrell and not Alex Jones. Dr. Paul Cottrell is older than Alex Jones. Alex Jones looks 15 years older than Dr. Paul Cottrell. He doesn't even take the products that he sells. I tell you exactly what I am doing. Now, I can't provide every, you know, vitamin and supplement that I take on my store yet. But I'm building it up so you can about everything I do. I've been taking CoQ10 and Ubiquinol for a long time, all right, years. It's really important. So go to my store and get the, this new product that I have, Ubiquinol. It's the active form for CoQ10. It's, gonna, it's an antioxidant. It's going to improve your energy levels and it's a neural protector, all right? It has some other functions too that help. And we'll go into detail in another video about it. But the thing is, is that please go to the store and get the new products that I have. This, this particular one is ubiquinol. You need to take it and it's synergistic. Remember when I was saying that it's about improving mitochondrial health and antioxidants, right? It's synergistic with C60 and, and, and resveratrol. When you take these stacks, these things together, you're attacking the biochemistry in different ways and it's improving it. That's how your body works, actually. So go to my store and get the resveratrol. It helps to get rid of senesce cells. Those are cells that build up toxins. They stop dividing because the telomeres are too short. But those cells won't go into apoptosis. And when you get older, you have more and more senesce cells. Well, you need to get rid of them. This helps to get rid of them. In addition, it's an antioxidant. It helps to support mitochondrial health. And it's synergistic with C60 and ubiquinol, co the active form of co CoQ10, all right? It's, it's even synergistic with clarity factor. How? Because clarity factor is keeping those dendritic connections and, and getting those, that firing. Well, if you're improving the mitochondrial health with the ubiquinol and the C60, and the resveratrol, it's further doing neural protection and improving those neural connections. It's about stacking. Please go to my store and get the ubiquinol, which is the, which is the active. Please go to my store and get the ubiquinol. It's the active form of CoQ10. I've been taking this for years. And I've been now able to get it on my store and provide it to you at a relatively inexpensive price. Since that assassination of Ismail Haniyeh, the leader of Hamas, which Israel has not taken responsibility for in any way, but Iran did come out immediately and say that they would launch a major attack in retaliation against Israel. As more time passes, does it become less likely that an attack will happen, or is it still kind of imminent? I think at this point it, it's imminent. You know, you never know when it's going to happen, but it's always really on the back of in the back of your minds. The Iranians are playing psychological warfare uh, with the state of Israel right now. Uh, different threats and different rumors have come about over the last two weeks. So it's going to happen tonight. It's going to happen tomorrow. All since all since uh, different rumors on social media or whatnot. So we have to really. I always say you have to listen to what your enemies are saying. In Iran, as I mentioned, the foreign minister did say they will attack. The question is when. So I don't think that the threat diminishes in any way as time goes by. 
the threat is still there. Iran has a uh, ballistic missiles program. And of course, the ultimate uh, threat is their nuclear program, which they're continuing to develop at a rapid pace. That is the biggest existential threat to the state of Israel, and not only to Israel, but to the Western world. They call Israel the little Satan. They call the United States the big Satan. It's also, it's very, very important to remember, this is not just about Israel. It's not just about the Middle East. It is about the safety of humanity. It's about the safety of the United States and the Western world. It's something we have to keep in mind. I want to talk a little bit about a conversation that President Biden did have with uh, Netanyahu once again yesterday. The White House did send out a uh, basically a report kind of summarizing the call. I know you looked over that report. Anything that stood out to you, or is it essentially just kind of more of the same of what we've seen over the past several months, those calls between Biden and Netanyahu? So the report itself, what I saw released by the White House, is more of the same in terms of the United States uh, saying it is committed to defending the state of Israel. But behind the scenes, I've talked to other uh, people who are in the know and whatnot, that they say actually that the Biden administration is trying to put more pressure on the Netanyahu administration uh, in terms of specifics in Gaza. They want to get a deal done, a hostage deal, in exchange with for, uh, for terrorists who are serving, who carried out the horrible October 7th massacre. But the Israeli government and Netanyahu have been absolutely clear. Israel must maintain a presence in southern Gaza. I'm talking about the Gaza-Egypt border, uh, the Philadelphia corridor, corridor, as it's known, we're talking about an eight, nine mile wide area there, which is safeguarding, preventing more of the weapon smuggling coming from Egypt to Gaza, which we've seen Israel last week destroyed 50 tunnels. I think a total of 100, 150 tunnels coming from Egypt into Gaza. We can't have that continue. And also, there's another corridor called the Netzarim Corridor, which is in central Gaza. The Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu, he has made it clear that we cannot allow weapons from southern Gaza, move up into northern Gaza, perhaps originating in Egypt, but that cannot happen. So right now, the Netanyahu government is saying, uh, yes, of course, we want a ceasefire. We want the hostages to be returned to us. Uh, but that being said, we cannot take these measures. We cannot, we cannot evacuate from these areas, which will lead uh, to a serious threat, security threat to the state of Israel. That can't happen. As an American, right, it is unacceptable for Blinken and Biden's administration to fail getting the American hostages home. Some expert, experts are saying that most of these hostages that are still, quote, in captivity by Hamas are probably dead. And there needs to be retribution for that. And this kicking the can down the road or not being forceful with Iran because they are the ones that are funding this with Hezbollah and Hamas is a disservice to any American citizen that was captured. In addition, we need to start really paying attention to what happened during the Beirut bombing in the 80s, what happened to the USS Cole, Iran needs, the, the theocracy of Iran needs to be obliterated. We have to maintain an Israeli presence in those areas. Is it even possible for a deal to be reached as the talks do continue over in Cairo? We know that Hamas has said it rejects the deal that was put forward. Uh, according to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Israel, for the most part, has said we're okay with the, the uh, basically deal that is put before us. So is it even possible for a deal to be reached between Israel and Hamas as they do meet again over in Cairo? I think it would be very difficult because, number one, as you mentioned, Hamas rejected every deal until now. And Hamas continues, continues to change the terms uh, of the deal as we carry on. So they're certainly playing games here. And, you know, with Hamas doing what they're doing, and let's remember, they are a terrorist organization. Just last Sunday in Tel Aviv, Hamas took responsibility for a failed suicide bombing attempt in the midst of negotiations. So this shows you exactly who they are, where they are, what they're about. They cannot be trusted as far as you can throw them. So Hamas, you know, negotiating with them, will it lead to anything meaningful? I, I think it's very unlikely. I think all parties 
have optimism, but yet at the, in the back of their minds, they know who we're dealing with here. They know, they know we're, we're dealing with a barbaric terrorist organization who carried out the October 7th massacre, who tried another suicide bombing for the first time in a while on, in Tel Aviv this past Sunday. So we can count on them in any way, shape, or form. And uh, yeah, of course, we want the hostages back, but it looks like Israel's going to have to do it militarily, and I do not have high hopes for these negotiations. My last question here before I let you go, we have been covering extensively the Democratic National Convention over in Chicago, and pretty much on a daily basis here, we have seen some very intense protests that are Gaza war protests. But I do want to ask, is that concerning to Israel to see this many protesters here uh, who are outside of the DNC protesting against Israel and just kind of making their voices heard? Is that concerning about the U.S.-Israel relationship when Israel takes a look at that? I don't think it's too concerning. This is a fringe element. We know that the vast majority of the American people side with the state of Israel. That is absolutely certain. I mean, uh, there's no doubt in my mind about that. And if you look at these protesters outside the DNC, if you saw what they were doing yesterday, they weren't just burning the Israeli flag. They were burning the American flag. Okay, so they are on the... Nothing pisses me off more than people in the United States that get, have freedoms and a stable economy and the ability to pursue their happiness. And of course there's problems in the United States. No country's perfect, but nothing pisses me off more than when someone disrespects the American flag. That is unacceptable. Absolutely fucking unacceptable. In just society in, in your country, in the United States, and we have to take it with a grain of salt in terms of the overall picture. We saw all the encampments and riots taking place on college campuses, a lot of them funded by outsiders, and even reports that Iran was directly funding some of those protests. I wouldn't be surprised if Iran or another one of these uh, extremist elements were funding those. You have sovereignty funds funding some of these schools and protests. You have George Soros and his open society BS funding these protests. You have Iran, you have elements of the CCP. We've been infiltrated at so many different levels. And then on top of it, and, I'm, and most of these people that are doing this are probably American citizens. Some probably are not, but, but most of them are. It is so disrespectful. I mean, I was raised to respect the flag, all right? That's because of my father's service in the army and, you know, my uncles and grandfather that, you know, served in, in Korea and, in, you know, in World War II. It, you don't disrespect the American flag. You don't let it touch the ground. You don't burn it. You show, you, revere, you show reverence to it. This is why I say, in, you know, it's about God, country, and family. And the Democratic Party is against God, country, and family. How can they be for family if the Democratic Party has vans out there for you know, drive through abortions and vasectomies, all right? Promoting this, promoting abortions and vasectomies. How's that pro-family? It's not. When you're demonizing people of religious faith, that's not pro-God. And when you're talking about, you know, having individuals out of the convention center burning the American flag, that's not patri patriotic. That's, that's disrespecting the American flag and what it stands for, of us 
moving towards a more perfect union. You don't disrespect the American flame because you're disrespecting every American soldier and their sacrifice. That's unacceptable. But the Democratic Party will allow it. They'll put a, quote, veteran on their platform as a VP, and he served, quote, honorably, supposedly, for 24 years. But there's something odd about him not deploying with his his company. Now he was of age where he was aging out. I mean, you know, being in the service for 24 years, 25 years is, you know, that's a long time. And then get deployed, you know, so there's something odd there about, and maybe JD Vance is right. Maybe it needs to be looked into. But I wouldn't say that Waltz disrespected the American flag. I think he honors the American flag because of his service to country for 24 years. I'm against his policies. I'm not for the Democratic Party. I'm voting for Trump. But you don't see people that are tied to the Republican Party going out and, and, and burning the American flag. That's totally unacceptable. Totally. It doesn't matter what your opinion is with, with the, the Israeli conflict in this regards. For Israel or against Israel. When you have citizens burning the American flag, that is a problem. That is a major problem. That, and patriots need to step up and stop that activity from happening and, and protect that flag. Now, if they are, if they are, non-American citizens burning the flag, they should be kicked out of this country. Because why are they in this country when they're disrespecting the American flag? Now, some people would say, well, it's a freedom of expression and blah, blah, blah. There's a code of conduct for the American flag. And you know what? You need to respect it. Because you're, dis you're, you're, you're dishonoring, you're disrespecting all the people that served our country and all the people that will be serving our country. It's not perfect, it's not a perfect place, but there's no reason to disrespect old glory, all right? You can tell a lot about someone on this particular issue. And the way I was raised, you don't do that. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they've, they've lost God, country, and family. It's, it's sad. That's all we need to make this country better is those three components. The Democratic Party is trying to put a wedge in that. And the key is to pull apart family. It's sad. It's sad. I get so irritated by it. I get so irritated it affects my gut biome. Please go to my store, the-studio-rapidbit.com, and get my probiotic. It's a powder. It, it, you mix it with your food or with water. It's a great probiotic. I take it every day. I also have a form that's in veggie cap for the ones that don't want to take the powder. So please go to my store and get the probiotics. Why is that important? A good gut biome is going to allow you to have better metabolism, better energy absorption, better communication between your gut and your liver. Your liver health will improve and your mental health will improve. Depression is correlated to gut health. In addition, poor gut health causes inflammation. By having inflammation, your barrier, your mucosal lining barrier is poor and diseases can start. Chronic inflammation of the gut can lead to cancers. Chronic inflammation of the gut can lead to pathogens getting into your lymphatic system or in your bloodstream. And it causes leaky gut and allergies and all these other problems with leaky gut syndrome. So that's why you need a good gut biome. 
So please go to my store and get the probiotics that I have. I have them in a powder form and I also have them in a veggie cap form. Please go to my store, uh, theory-reykjavik.com so you don't have an inflamed gut. And by the way, if you see someone burning the American flag, push back. Because guess what? That's what that's what an American does. You don't you don't let that flag touch the ground and you don't let someone burn it. Protesters outside the DNC, but these are people who in the streets of downtown Chicago were burning the American flag. It's not just about Israel. They're burning the American flag. And that just says a lot about who they really are. It really does. All right, Josh Haston, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and kind of break down the latest developments there out of the Middle East. Anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? Yeah, I'm just going to say, you know, in terms of uh, the Iranian threat right now, again, it's in the back of everyone's mind. But that being said, um, if you're not on the war front down in southern Israel, and by the way, Israel's having a lot of success right now. I just heard that uh, we destroyed uh, the Rafa Battalion of Hamas. Uh, Minister, Defense Minister Gallant reported that late last night. So that is happening there. And if you're not on the front lines in the north, again, very, very difficult situation. But if you come, if you come to Israel now, you will see a lot of people out in the summer. People are walking the streets of Tel Aviv, walking the streets of Jerusalem and all the other cities. And that is thanks to the brave men and women of the IDF who are keeping us safe 24-7. So I have to give a respect where, uh, where it is absolutely due to those who are protecting us and, and are allowing us, despite all the uh, horrible things that have happened over the last nine months. They're allowing us to try to keep our lives as normal as possible, even with the Iranian threat and all the other threats that we have. This is a war on seven fronts. It's not just one, two, or three. Seven fronts trying to attack and eliminate the one and only Jewish state, and we will not let that happen, thanks to the brave men and women in uniform. All right, Josh, thank you again for being... And this dovetails into what's going on in China. And I want to play something from Fox Business. Jim, you know what's really fun? Make your website on with. Hey, we have a ridiculous story. Before we do that, what mad Democrat? Please go to my store and get the omega three. This will help to improve your lipid profile. It'll bring down LDL levels. It'll increase your HDL levels. This is synergistic with some other products that I offer, like natto kinase and you know other things, but. Uh, Omega-3 is also important in preventing your red blood cells from sticking too much. In the post-crisis of 2020, people have clotting issues. So it's really important to control your cardiovascular health. I have lots of products to do that. If you've been following what I've been saying, you can improve your cardiovascular health and you can you know, improve that lipid profile and reduce sticking and break break up clots with digestive enzyme complex and the, the natto kinase and omega-3 is synergistic with that. So please go to my store, control your lipid profile, bring down your LDL levels, increase your HDL levels. It's really important. Go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. Presidential nominee Tim Waltz made quite the impression as a teacher in China, according to a new NPR report. Former students speaking to the outlet calling Waltz lively and cheerful during his time teaching English and a U.S. history at a Chinese middle school. And during a 1991 lesson on Chinese communism, Waltz reportedly said the ideology means that everyone is the same and everyone shares. NPR writing this, Waltz became part of one of the first government-sanctioned groups of American educators to arrive after the country opened its doors to the world in the 1980s. The 89 to 90s school year started shortly after the Chinese army crushed pro-democracy protesters centered on Beijing's Tiananmen Square in June of 1989, you remember. Waltz has made roughly 30 trips to China since then and even got married on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. The Republican-led House Oversight Committee is investigating Waltz for his long-standing connections to China. During now is Gatestone Institute senior fellow, author of The Coming Collapse of China, and China is Going to War, Gordon Chang. Gordon, great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. What is your assessment of Tim Waltz's relationship with China and its communism leadership? Well, first of all, we've got to be very concerned about his company that he set up in 1995, Educational Travel Adventures. 
This was an adventure that had to be approved by the Communist Party's United Front Work Department. That's the part of the party that uh, subverts foreign governments. So basically, this was a, a whole series of events that the Communist Party just loved. And during that time, you know, Waltz has been quoted as some very pro Maoist things. And, you know, people change their views. But just a couple of weeks ago, he talked about socialism being the same as a good neighbor. Right. So clearly, those views that he had in his formative years are ones he still holds today, which means. Please watch my recent interview and discussion with Taiwan, Miss Taiwan. She's, she played it, she, she's saying. The whole platform, the Harris platform, it's all about China. China's pulling the strings. She's a communist. Walt seems like a communist. They're trying to destroy this country, destroy economics by pushing social agendas, not in the middle, like middle ground. It's communistic. Now, what's shocking is, is how he spent so much time in the service and he has this mentality because most people that spend the time in the service, especially that long, are Republican. I just, it's, it, it's, we're, we are being sold down the river. We need to wake up. And this is why it's so important that we win in the Pacific theater. We cannot let China win. Why? because developed nations in the West will try to copy their political and economic model. That means the destruction of, of, of American demo de democracy and it's the destruction of American capitalism. If you think I am you know, talking to hyperbole, guess what? UK and elements in the United States between World War I and World War II wanted to push a, a, a move into a, a communist path. And thank God that didn't happen. He shouldn't be one heartbeat away from the Oval Office. I, I'm wondering if this um, piece about U.S. firms warning against unprecedented Hong Kong cyber rules is evidence that Hong Kong can no longer be differentiated. From communist China. The American companies this morning are warning that proposed cyber regulation could grant its government unprecedented access to their computers, a threat to tech giants operating in the region, Gordon. As you know, you've talked about this so much. The legislation in Hong Kong would allow authorities to connect equipment to private firms' computer systems and install programs on them. Hong Kong officials claim the legislation is aimed at protecting against cyber attacks. But critics say government surveillance powers would become overly broad and harm tech investments in Hong Kong. I mean, Wall Street has to admit at this point that they've been struggling to maintain this fiction that Hong Kong remains independent after the CCP went in there and took and over. And not only that, yeah. it certainly is not. Wall Street has been paying for the buildup of the military of the CCP, of the PLA. China's military was bought and paid for by Wall Street. Because there were stupid people putting money in investment funds for that, that increase in yield in China. And this was happening during the Obama administration. Why? Because the fucking hot money that the Federal Reserve created right after Lehman and that whole TARP program and that whole quantitative easing, one, two, three, four, by Bernanke, was all under... Obama. So that hot money went to Wall Street and that money went to China. Barack Obama built up the military in China. That's what fucking happened. And then now you have a bunch of fucking socialists that are burning the American flag in Chicago. And especially after the national security law that was imposed in 2020. These cyber rules are basically the same as the rules that China put in place about 18 months, two years ago, which essentially gives the party total run of access of foreign computer systems, which means if you're a foreign company, you let them into your system in China, 
you're letting them into your system worldwide unless you do what some companies, which is to just air gap their China operations. I don't know how you do that if you're a major bank. I mean, J.P. Morgan is there, Bank of America is there. Are they all being surveilled? Yeah. If you're a major bank, you can't air gap your systems. That's just not the way financial systems operate these days. Only some companies can do that. And it's very, very hard because once the Chinese know about your general architecture in China, they can use that to penetrate your architecture elsewhere. I mean, we've seen the CCP march into Hong Kong. Do you think that- So they go in and attack the west side of Taiwan and the Luzon Strait is protected by the northern part of the Philippines with U.S. bases. And those islands that are on the northern eastern front of Taiwan protected by America, uh, American bases and, and J- Japanese. And all of a sudden there's a cyber war that goes on with American infrastructure or American finance. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Wall Street. Thank you, Wall Street, for actually allowing China to have more leverage on us. And Obama not building up the Navy, but truncating it at the same time that this is all happening. And Obama wants you to think, give hope a chance. <laughs> Fuck. Then, I mean, could that happen in Taiwan? I mean, could, could it happen in America? Yeah, I mean, you, you look at this right now, it's very exciting what Gordon is saying and been warning about this. And now you have a candidate whose views at best are muddy on what he believes about China. This is just a concern that, that Americans, I think, are not getting a full picture on because we never hear about this connection except places like this. And, and yeah. look, China, China does the subversive very well. And I think that's the part that everybody missed. That we're, we're being scared into the military side, which is a real threat as someone in the military, but it's the subversive side in these countries across the world. And what Gordon was talking about that bothered me and I think more than anybody else. So many stories are bothersome. I mean, federal prosecutors have arrested a Chinese dissident living in the United States for allegedly spying on pro-democracy groups and sending information back to China. Um, officials say that the 67-year-old man has been spying on the United States since 2018, providing information to China upon its direction, even traveling at least three times to meet Chinese intelligence officers face-to-face. Authorities reportedly recovered instructions from China guiding the man's spying activities. He's been charged with acting and conspiring to act as an unregistered agent of the People's Republic of China. Your reaction. Two things here. First of all, um, China uses every point of contact to undermine the United States. That's Doug's point. I mean, regardless of it. Second point, you know, American presidents have known for a very long time. And Amer- some American presidents let this happen. And Wall Street let this happen so they can get a 10% return year over year. That's the, that's the big takeaway. When Lehman happened... And there was hot money created by the Federal Reserve. A lot of it went overseas. A lot of it went to China. And Americans were like, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going to get those returns. Where do you think that money, what that money was doing and all those products that we were buying from China? It was actually building World War III. This is why it's so important to bring back manufacturing so we are we are we have a, a a better footing to be able to support a war on top of supporting American jobs. But you have the Democratic Party that says that, oh, that's backwards and that you know that's 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 uh, uh, this America first policy from Trump is bad. If we don't do America first, we're going to end up America last. <sighs> Please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get vitamin K2, MK7. It's the MK7 molecule, all right? What does this do? This helps with bones to re- help uh, improve your, your bone health, help with your joint health. 
but it also, if you've been following my protocols, it will also help with cardiovascular health. All right, it's synergistic with D3, with C60, with ashwagandha, with turmeric, with omega-3, with natokinase. Why? Because when you take them in a stack, you're going to actually improve your vascular system and reduce plaque and, and, and reduce the chances of developing new plaque. So it's reducing the chances of developing new plaque and reducing the plaque that you have, diminishing it, all right? That's important. Now, how does it work? K2 helps to also absorb calcium, but it works with D3 and C60 and natokinase, omega-3, ashwagandha, and turmeric. The turmeric and ashwagandha control the inflammation so the intima doesn't get perturbed so you don't have foam cells developing, right? And having LDL, you know, getting in and developing a plaque. In addition, the natokinase will help to bring down the LDL levels and increase your HDL levels. If there is a little bit of a clot that's starting to form, it'll dissolve the clot. The omega-3 also brings down the LDL levels and brings up your HDL levels, reduces the red blood cells from sticking. And the C60 is a strong antioxidant, so it's reducing the chances of oxidized LDL. These all work together to reduce the plaque and reduce the chances of getting new plaques. So go to my store and get the vitamin K2 this is the MK7 version, right? This is very important for your bone health and for your cardiovascular health, if you've been following what I've been saying for the protocol. So please go to my store, the-studio-rayfit.com. And like I said, it's synergistic with D3. D3 helps to absorb calcium. It improves the absorption of calcium when you take K2. Synergistic stack. It's a gene expression cofactor. Helps with expressing genes for proper cellular function. In addition, if your cells need to go through apoptosis, D3 helps them to go through apoptosis. And so your body can get rid of those cells, especially if they're infected. So if you have something that infects the cell that shuts down your innate immune system, preventing it from going into apoptosis, guess what? Take D3 and it'll help to go into apoptosis to mitigate that problem, which is something I was saying about two or 3,000 times throughout the crisis in 2020. I, that Ministry of State Security agents have operated on our soil. And also, we've allowed Chinese consular officials to do the same thing. And we don't do anything about it. So, of course, the Chinese say, look, we're going to violate your sovereignty because you can't defend yourself or you won't defend yourself. Mm. Uh, and then there's the nuclear front. President Biden reportedly approved a secret nuclear strategy, which refocuses on the Chinese threat. Um, saying this, the White House never announced that Mr. Biden had approved the revised strategy called, it, called the nuclear employment guidance. The document updated every four years or so. It is so highly classified that there are no electronic copies for it. Only a small number of hard copies distributed to a few national security officials. China responded to the report, saying it is, quote, seriously concerned and accusing the United States of, quote, peddling the China nuclear threat narrative. China possesses roughly 500 operational nuclear warheads as of May 2023 and will likely have more than 1,000 nuclear warheads by 2030, according to the Defense Department, according. Yeah, and, and China probably will have... If we start to have nuclear war, it's going to get really hot. You're going to need a good deodorant. So please go to my store, the-studio-rakevic.com, and get the citrus or the peppermint, lavender, and tea tree deodorant. It's for males and females. It's made from essential oils from the Himalayas. It's all natural. It has no aluminum, no baking soda in it, and it helps to detoxify your body. So it's a dual-purpose product. Go to the store, get a couple bars of this, 
Get the citrus or peppermint lavender and tea tree deodorants for your household. It's a very high quality product and you're gonna be very happy on the performance of it. In addition, Rainbow Herbals and I developed the even better bar, all right? We partnered up and we developed this bar. It's an all-purpose skin care bar. You can apply it on your skin every day. You'll notice that your skin is smoother, softer, and it has a little bit of a glow to it. It will eliminate itching from a bug bite like a mosquito bite. It will help to heal wounds, you know, cuts, abrasions, minor burns. It'll heal it quicker. You can apply it on psoriasis and eczema and mitigate that issue. You can put it on acne and help to heal the acne. You can put it on a, a muscle ache and it'll either eliminate the muscle ache or radically diminish it in about 60 seconds to 120 seconds. If you have a bug bite and it's itching, it'll, it'll eliminate the, the itching in about 30 seconds or 60 seconds. It's a very high quality product. So please go to the store and get this. It's an all utility type, you know, skincare bar. So please go to the store and get the even better bar. It's very high quality, made from essential oils from the Himalayas. I have C60, very strong antioxidant that is synergistic with the stacking, like I've been saying, for many different, different reasons. C60 is an extremely strong antioxidant. It's in, a, and it's in an, an oil. You can get it in extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, an MCT coconut oil, or the avocado oil, all right? Why is it in an oil? C60 is a molecule that's 60 carbons that helps to absorb neutralize these free radicals that cause damage to your cell. So they're neutralizing the free radicals. It's a very strong antioxidant, but you need to dissolve it in a lipid, in, in, in an oil. So this, why, so this is why it's in different types of oils. Now, some people prefer the taste of different ones or whatever, all right? But the thing is, is that I have an extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, or MCT coconut oil, all right? Go to the store and get the C60. I have it in a two ounce, a four ounce, and an eight ounce configuration. The higher ounce configuration, the price per ounce goes down. So you get a discount if you buy it in the higher ounces. So please go to the store and get the C60. It will soak up those free radicals. And when you're soaking up those free radicals, your cells have less stress. They can heal in addition it also helps to boost up the mitochondrial health. And so you have more ATP, so you have more energy. And so you, the cell works better. Your endocrine system works better. Your tissues work better. Your, your organs work better. Your neurons fire better. You have better memory. It's synergistic. You should take this every day. Take a teaspoon of it every day. When you take a teaspoon of it every day, you'll start to notice in a very short amount of time that your body is healing and your body is functioning better because you're getting rid of all this endocrine disruption crap because of our environment. And you'll notice that you're aging slower. It's synergistic with a lot of other stuff like the ubiquinol and the resveratrol and the clarity factor, and the NAD plus. So please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com, and get the C60. To, it's a very strong antioxidant. Take a teaspoon of it a day, and it'll soak up those free radicals. If you take it on an empty stomach, you get better absorption of C60. And if you work out, take it before you work out, and it will improve your recovery time. So please go to my store and get the C60. Something like some people say about 7,000 by about the middle of next decade. We just don't know. But the point is, this is one of the fastest nuclear buildups that we have seen. Also, you know, China is threatening to use this. They always say, look, if you come to the defense of Taiwan, we're gonna nuke you first. So what we are doing is reacting. 
This in nuclear employment guidance is stunning because remember, you go back to 2022, Biden, Biden's net, um, nuclear security posture review. This was basically a review where he was going to ditch decades long American policy on protecting our allies. He didn't do it, but only after ferocious um, lobbying by France, Germany, Australia. For Biden to actually say we might increase our deployed nukes, that is stunning change of opinion. Mm, wow. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Gordon, it's great to have you this morning. Thank you so much. Lovely. As the world turns, please help support my work by going to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com, and get the natokinase. This helps to break up clots because it's fibrinolytic. It'll also help to bring down LDL levels and increase your HDL levels. So it's really important for cardiovascular health. You should be taking this every day. If you take it in higher doses, you're going to bring down your cholesterol. Hint, hint. You don't need stats. NAD plus. This helps with energy, also with uh, mental health and brain function. It's important to take every day. It's synergistic with resveratrol and niacin. All right. So take this every day. I've been taking this every day. I've been taking this every day for a while. And it, you know, it's also synergistic with NMN, right? Now, NMN, I don't provide on my store, but the thing is, is that, you know, niacin, NMN, NAD plus, they're all attacking in different ways to help to improve your energy levels and to, to help uh, in, in this case, to help with brain function. So please go to the store and get the NAD plus. You'll have more energy right? Boost that up. Your, your body needs energy to heal. Your body needs energy to be moving around. When you start, when people get older, their energy levels go down. Why? Because their mitochondrial health goes down, their cellular health goes down. And then all of a sudden they start to atrophy. They start to gain weight. They start having problems with insulin resistance and all this stuff. All right. It's about energy, 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 energy. You'll look at a, a, a puppy you know, a young dog, it has lots of energy. You look at a kid, it has lots of energy. It's correlated. When you look at someone that's old, they don't have so much energy. Get energy. Get the NAD+. Plus. And NAC is very important. It's an antioxidant. It also helps to detoxify the body. So you should be taking NAC+. It's, it's really important to get those glutathione levels up. It's another way to attack. This is synergistic with the C60 that I, that I was saying, because this is a strong antioxidant, right? Soaking up those free radicals. This is an antioxidant too that's, that's increasing your glutathione levels, which, also is an, which is also an antioxidant. They work together in different ways. This is the whole point about stacking. This is the whole point about m different vector points to, to improve your health. Get the NEC. It's very important to add to your daily protocol. I know that I try to inform you and I have lots of products and there's lots of ways to stack this to improve your health. And some people complain that I spend so much time trying to you know, promote these products. The problem is, is that there's lots of people out there that don't understand on how to stack this stuff. And that's the, that is the magic way. That's the, that's the experience and the wisdom coming from the longevity and, and the anti-aging subculture. And you can apply it and improve your health and not go down the road of big pharma. It is in your ability to mitigate many of these lifestyle type diseases, diabetes and heart disease. Now, of course, there's some predisposition genetically and, not, and it's not a magic bullet, but the thing is, is there's lots to be learned from the longevity and the anti-aging crowd. And I'm trying to explain this to you on top of what's going on in the world. Because 
Stuff like this is going to help improve your health. Me going over stuff like this is getting you informed on how the world is getting out of control and that how you can be prepared. Now, that's the reason why I push so hard on this. And I was raised in such a way that you don't back down. So please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the fucking products that will boost up your immune system. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.